Okay, we're going to talk about parallel lines and transversals in this video here. First things first is to talk about what a transversal is. So the line DC right here intersects two different lines. And you could see forms 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 different angles. And so we say that DC is a transversal because it's a line that intersects two or more lines. Well, when you intersect two or more lines and you create those angles, you create angle relationships and angle patterns depending on the types of lines that are intersected. So first things first, I want to show you what some of these angle relationships are, and then I want to talk about some of the patterns. So the first of which are same side interior angles. Same side, meaning same side of the transversal. So these two angles, angle 1 and angle 3, you see they're on the same side of the transversal. They're both on the left side. And then interior, another word for interior is inside. So the two lines that are intersected are here and here. So they are inside of those two, this area, and this area will be exterior or outside. So they are same side, same side of the transversal. And inside the two lines that got intersected, same side interior angles. Okay, then we've got alternate interior angles, meaning opposite sides or switching sides across the transversal. See how angle one is on the left side and angle two is on the right side. That's the alternate idea. Then we go back to interior, meaning inside the lines that were intersected by the transversal. So inside of these two lines here, angle one and angle two. So notice they have this diagonal relationship. They're non-adjacent. So we don't want like say these two angles because that's a that's a linear pair. That's something else. Alternate interior angles are non-adjacent, but they are having this angle, this uh, diagonal relationship. So alternate left to right or you know, opposite sides of the transversal, and then interior inside of the two lines that were intersected. Now we've got corresponding angles. Another way to think about corresponding angles would be matching angles. If you take a look at this quad of angles right here, and you look at this as like maybe coordinates and the different quadrants on a coordinate um, on a graph paper, you can see that this angle right here and this angle right here show up in the same quadrants of their four. So bottom right and bottom right. Like for instance, this angle here and this angle right here, they would be matching angles. This angle right here, this angle right here, they would be matching angles. This angle right here and this angle right here, they would be matching angles. Those would be all pairs of corresponding angles. So notice that they show up in the same location or same quadrant as the second angle that they're paired with corresponding angles um, we also have some other angle relationships that I do want to point out to you um, here I might have to draw them in as I've uh, neglected to include them in so they would be something like angle one and angle two, we call those alternate exterior angles. And that will be because they are on different sides of the transversal, but they have the diagonal relationship like alternate interior has, but these are located on the outside of the lines that were intersected. Alrighty. Now we're going to talk a little bit about some of the patterns that go with these uh, angle relationships. So, first things first, if the lines that are cut by the transversal, so these lines are what I'm talking about. If those lines are parallel, so that means if those lines never intersect, are in the same plane, have the same slope, remain the same distance apart from each other throughout their entirety, then those lines create some angular patterns that are very, very predictable and very, very user-friendly. So for instance, first things first, if these lines are parallel, indicated by maybe some arrows like that, and cut by a transversal, then corresponding angles 
are congruent. Now remember that congruent means equal or the same. Our congruent symbol is this right here. So this means that angle 4 and angle 5 are the exact same thing. So if I told you that angle 4 was 27, then you would know automatically that angle 5 would have to be 27 because those two angles are congruent because lines that are parallel cut by a transversal create congruent corresponding angles. All right? Let me see if I can make all this fit on the screen here. Here we go. Alternate interior angles, that's like angle 1 and angle 2. If these lines are parallel, indicated by those arrows there, then those angles, angle 1 and angle 2, are the exact same thing. They would be congruent. They would be congruent. All right. Remember our congruent symbol again. Remember they're the exact same thing. They're equal. If I told you that angle 1 was 115 degrees, angle 2 would automatically be 115 degrees. But again, these two only happen if the lines cut by the transversal are parallel. So I've got to tell you, that's what that symbol right there tells you. Those two baby parallel lines tell me that the lines are parallel, so these patterns are true. All right, same side interior angles, however, Notice you've got an obtuse angle here and an acute angle there. They're not going to be congruent. Even when these lines are parallel, as indicated by that symbol right there, we do get a pattern, but they're not the same. Actually, what ends up happening is they are supplementary. Supplementary. And if you remember from previous sections, supplementary means their sum is 180. So this right here is the piece of information that you have to keep in mind supplementary. All right, I did want to add in, in case um, we run into these, something like angle 8 and angle 9, those would be alternate exterior angles. If these lines are parallel and cut by a transversal, then alternate exterior angles are congruent. So, if, I'm going to say this is L and M, if L is parallel to M, Angle 8 is congruent to angle 9. That's the alternate exterior angle theorem. So if the lines are parallel and cut by a transversal, you get some really nice angle patterns here. So quick refresher, alternate exterior, alternate interior, and corresponding angles are congruent if the lines are parallel. Same side interior angles are supplementary, meaning these two add up to 180 degrees, provided these lines are parallel. Now, we can use these concepts to prove that lines are parallel by doing what's called the converse. So first things first, the idea of the converse is a statement an if-then statement that's true if you reverse the if and the then. So, for instance, something like, if a light is red, then cars stop. So you switch the if and the then part. If cars stopped, then the light is red. That's a true statement. That's a converse when you switch the if and the then. You can use this idea of a converse to prove lines are parallel, provided these ideas of congruent angles or supplementary angles are in place ahead of time. Let me show you what I mean. So proving lines parallel, if I wanted to show that, let's say this is line L and this is line M and this is line um, I, right here, if I wanted to show that L and M were parallel, and then what I could do is if I knew that, say, angle 1 was congruent to angle 3 ahead of time, then that would mean that corresponding angles were congruent. Well, if corresponding angles were congruent, the lines must be parallel. All right? Another way to do that would be, say, something maybe like angle 4 is congruent to angle 2. Well, if angle 4 was congruent to angle 2, that would mean alternate interior angles were congruent. Well, if alternate interior angles are congruent, the lines must be parallel. 
Um, you could also talk about angle 2 plus angle 6 equaling 180 degrees. So that would mean that these two angles, alternate interior angles, I'm sorry, same side interior angles, 2 and 6, were supplementary, added up to 180 degrees. Well, if that's true, the lines must be parallel. You see how I'm just reversing the if and the them from previously? We're using the converse to prove that these lines were parallel. So let's say I had an additional angle, say like angle 7. And I told you that angle 7 was congruent to angle 5. Well, that must mean that alternate exterior angles are congruent. And if alternate exterior angles are congruent, the lines L and M had to be parallel. So we use this idea of converse to prove lines parallel. And again, why would I be in a situation to prove lines parallel? That's if I didn't already know it, but I knew these angle relationships were already true because they were either given to me or they were already part of my picture and I knew that they were the same, I could kind of use the reverse or the converse to prove these concepts were true. So we'll use that in some proofs. We'll use that in some of our examples to show these concepts. Okay, I wanted to finish the video by showing what I mean um, in context. First things first, these grab my attention. That means that these lines are parallel. Then I'm cut by this transversal here. So that means that I need to diagnose what the relationship is between these two angles that they're pointing at here and here. Well, those would be alternate interior angles. And if the lines are parallel, we should know that alternate interior angles are congruent. So that means 6x minus 29 is equal to 3x plus 17. I'll solve that and, and by setting them equal, I'll get x's on the same side, get the constants on the same side, and solve for x. But again, I can't set up this equation unless I know the relationship that alternate interior angles are congruent. Angles are congruent if lines are parallel. And that's where we got that equation from. So you would solve for x from there. Our next example is finding the missing angles. First things first, they told me that J is parallel to K. So I can mark that these two lines are parallel. And that means all those angle relationships are in play. Um, we already have permanently vertical angles are congruent, linear pairs are supplementary. But we also can now add, because of the parallel lines, alternate interior angles are congruent, alternate exterior angles are congruent, corresponding angles are congruent, and same side interior angles are supplementary. All of those things are at our disposal to be able to find the missing seven angle measurements here. I'm going to use 68 to my advantage, and the way that I'm going to show you the missing angles is just one of many ways to come up with these missing angles. For instance, I could take a look and say, okay, 68 and 6 must be congruent because they're corresponding angles. 68 and 4 should be congruent because they are alternate exterior angles. Um, I can look at 68 and angle 2 as being congruent because they are vertical angles. All right, next, I can move to one of these other angles that I know the measure of and see if I could connect some more to it. Um, angle 2. 2 and angle 6, they're alternate interior angles, so it makes sense that they both have the same measure. Angle 2 and angle 4, they're corresponding angles, so it also makes sense that they have the same measure. But what about something like angle 1? Well, angle 1 and angle 2, or angle 1 and this 68 degree angle here, those aren't any of these angle relationships that we were talking about with parallel lines, but they do, however, make a linear pair, which means that they add up to 180 degrees. So 180 minus 68 is going to give me what the measure of angle 1 is because those two add up to 180 degrees. Well, that's going to give me 112 degrees. And now I can use that to get other angle measures. For instance, angle 1 and angle 3 are corresponding angles. They're congruent. Angle 1 and angle 5 are alternate exterior angles. They're congruent. Angle 1 and angle 7 are Vertical angles, they're congruent. And again, sorry, that's 115. Sorry, I put 115 there. That should be 112, and this should be 112. I apologize. Those should be congruent. Um, and that's just one of many ways that you can find all the missing angles. Um, you can use linear pairs and, core and uh, vertical angles throughout the whole thing. You can go corresponding angles throughout the whole thing. 
You could do lots of different things, but these are the.